thought I'd do a quick review of these three electronic theory books. They're all intended for the beginner, to take them from beginner to fairly advanced. Electronics from the Ground Up is by Ronald Kwan, who's also a radio amateur and has previously written a book on making transistor radios. It starts with the very basics and then gets into mostly analog and radio frequency electronics. Then there's Make Electronics by Charles Platt. There's two books, the first Make Electronics book and then Make More Electronics, which is the successor volume. Books from both authors take a learning by discovery approach with some difference in emphasis. For instance, Electronics from the Ground Up is largely analog and radio type electronics, whereas the Make Electronics series make more extensive use of digital circuits and digital ICs. Having a look at electronics from the ground up, it's quite a comprehensive index and it goes through the very basics like your tools, doing things with batteries. The idea is that it introduces the very basic components and rather than going to the theory, go straight into what you can do with them like a little torch you can make and then descriptions of components and again some ideas on measuring them and what to do. There's all sorts of little hints that you'd get from more experienced people that you wouldn't necessarily find in a basic book. They're obviously based on practical experience, just things like not bending glass diode leads too close to the body of the diode in case you break it. So that's a good hint to follow. The author's obviously a very keen radio and electronics experimenter. A lot of practical experience is distilled in these pages. There's various construction techniques, screws on boards, farm stop clips, plug-in breadboards, and then later on talks about soldering and different types of solder joints. There are a lot of pictures in this book which is good, but they're all black and white, and maybe not as good as other books. I've got a couple of minor cribbles with it. For instance, there's a list of typical resistor values. Some are in bold, supposed to indicate the most common used, but they do seem to skip some common values. For instance, 120K, which is a preferred value, is not listed. Same with 12k. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for that. And they don't talk about E6, E12, which is the numerical series for resistors and other components based on preferred values and tolerances. One thing I've found with this book is, although it starts off very simple, it gets very complex fairly quickly. And I wouldn't recommend this as your only electronics textbook. For instance, the bit on radio signal modulation and even SSB, double sideband and all the algebraic equations that purport to describe SSB and double sideband signals, that's all pretty complex and is actually just before the pages on crystal sets. So I think the order of things isn't quite right in how you'd explain them. Another thing is where they explain a crystal radio set circuit. They have as an example in the diagram a 5 picofarad capacitor between the antenna and the tuned circuit. There's a good description on how connecting an antenna directly to the tuned circuit would load it down and cause selectivity to be poor and how that can be counteracted by having a capacitor between the antenna and the tuned circuit. But for a crystal set operating on the AM broadcast band, 5 picofarad would actually allow very little RF through from the antenna, and you'd be better off to tap the antenna connection lower down on the coil. 5 picofarad is extremely small and would have a very high impedance at 1 MHz. However, there are some novel techniques which even experienced radio experimenters may be unaware of. For instance, a circuit of a TRF radio using inductive loading to allow operation of a 1.5 volt battery. A lot of this is informed by the author's professional experience in electronic design. The book goes from audio signals 
then an advanced electronics section which is where the section on modulation is first all starting with radio and then going into video there is quite a lot of algebra and as I mentioned before the book goes from being very basic to very advanced in not very many pages so other reference books are useful to fill in the missing middle and at the back there's a little bit hacking inventing and designs they've got a few things you can do with consumer electronic and other items there's mention of quite a novel radio that although it looks like a conventional transistor radio was actually a software defined radio not sure if these are available new but they could be interesting for the experimenter although the book talks about buying one taking it apart there's not actually very many projects or ideas you can do with it the author of the book is quite an accomplished RF designer and holds a US patent for a wide frequency deviation voltage controlled crystal oscillator with plural parallel crystals if you're into RF design this could be worth looking up a description of a non veractor electronic variable capacitor also intriguing and again the author has a patent on that so yeah that's electronics from the ground up by Ronald Cran as you can see it's quite a thick book nearly 500 pages it goes from very simple to very complex but there could possibly be a bit more detail to help you get between the two there's some ideas in here that I think are the author's own so if you're into electronics and RF design then this could be a book worth getting now we'll look at Charles Platt's two books I'll just cover them quickly Make Electronics and its successor for the absolute beginner in electronics it starts off really simple each chapter has a list of what's in it setting up with your basic tools multimeters and your first test is just putting your tongue across a 9 volt battery and feeling the power or tasting it there's some other simple experiments and also some information on the history of electricity science and some of the scientists and inventors the color illustrations here are quite good also some nice diagrams much better quality than electronics from the ground up and I prefer the circuits in here as well more on, on setting up gets into your components circuit diagrams various experiments they are using solderless breadboard then they go on to soldered board matrix board discrete components they start off with a simple circuit and develop it a bit more some fun with LEDs alarms you're going from a simple to a more advanced alarm ICs a lot of detail on the various logic chips using them flip-flops triple five multi vibrators pulse generators logic boolean and uh, quite a few experiments definitely into logic chips here something I loved in the make electronics book was how they explained the logic families full marks to make electronics for that as for the more electronics more of the same but it does start off fairly simple but it's generally more advanced so you wouldn't buy this book without also getting make electronics first they're a good companion to one another unlike the electronics from the ground up not much in the way of radio circuits more your general electronics op amps logic ICs sound and light I'd, I'd definitely recommend both lots of books but electronics from the ground up more if you've got a radio emphasis and you have other books if you are only to have one set of books then I think the make electronics and make more electronics is a little bit more complete as it doesn't get into your algebra and your complex design as much 
and it's practically oriented. To sum up, all three books could be useful. If you are studying your amateur license and are stuck on a particular concept because your license study manual may not have an explanation that makes sense to you, then I suggest getting some of these other books as there might be something in them that makes it click and you then understand the concept. Or if you or someone you know is learning general electronics, you can do a lot worse than to point them to these books.